Gentleman Mr. from Texas Session. is recognized for as much time as he may consume. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, thank you very much, and I thank the gentleman, uh, Mr. Scott, from Georgia. Mr. Speaker, today we're on the floor for a very important question, and the question is, will Congress ignore knowledge of some $476 million that is considered documented fraud that is taking place by a taxpayer on behalf of taxpayers of the United States of America? Mr. Speaker, a letter from Commissioner Pai at the Federal Communications Commission dated June 8, 2016, not even a month ago, goes to Mr. Chris Henderson, Chief Executive Officer, Universal Service Administration, Administrative Company of the United States. It documents in here, and I would read if I may, Thank you again for your May 25th letter, Mr. Henderson, which contained detailed data on how wireless resellers have used the National Lifeline Accountability Database. My staff has concluded further, further analysis of this data, and I'm now concerned that the abuse of the Universal Service Funds Lifeline Program is more widespread than I first thought. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Scott is here on the floor today to protect the taxpayer of this country and the integrity of the laws that we have passed and oversight of by virtue of being members of Congress. The $476 million is a problem because it is documented that it is duplicate use by organizations who have been fined over $50 million by the FCC. In no way is Mr. Scott or this legislation attempting to take away lifeline service that is very important to not only members in particular rural areas, but other areas of the United States to provide them access to broadband that has been created uh, by our American uh, ingenuity. I would note, however, that what we're doing is that we do not believe that government has any business in funding the fraud that has been made available. Mr. Speaker, I was on the original labs team out of New Jersey that developed broadband in the mid-1980s. I was on the original team that brought forth this product to the American people, and it was done with great anticipation to help better people's lives to allow all areas of the United States and probably the world to better connect itself for the new translationist world that we would live in. But never was it, I don't think, envisioned that we would want it to be misused in such a way that it would cost taxpayers of this country $500 million a year of fraud. It is there as an advocate for people to gain jobs, to understand education better, and to use the avenues of technology to better their lives. Where you have documented fraud, the United States Congress has a responsibility to And I believe that's what we're saying today by this suspension vote. We are expecting two-thirds of this body to recognize that where there is widespread fraud, that the United States Congress, on behalf of the taxpayer who paid the bill for the fraud, that something responsible would be done about it. So, Mr. Speaker, I would ask that, without objection, this, record, this letter be allowed in the record, but more importantly, that this Congress be responsible about saying it is documented fraud that we are after, not lifeline service. I yield back my time.